there was a MiG engagement with an F-15 directly below the airplane, and it turns out the MiG had no idea that the B-2s were directly overhead. The Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit is one of the most ingenious engineering marvels in aviation history. A nuclear-capable bomber designed specifically to deliver weapons deep within enemy territory. But faced with the challenge of deceiving the most advanced air defense systems in the world, the B-2 Spirit was engineered with pioneering stealth technology that changed the course of modern day aerial warfare. And I want to show you the genius engineering that made such a revolutionary aircraft possible and how it pioneered some of the greatest stealth technology in the history of mankind. The B-2 Spear was a plane built in the middle of the Cold War with a single strategic purpose in mind. In the late 1970s, the United States was in a struggle to maintain solid nuclear deterrence against the Soviets. They needed a bomber capable of penetrating Soviet air defenses to ensure that they could maintain a credible threat in the situation of escalating conflict. At the same time, the F-117 Nighthawk had just begun development to become the world's first stealth aircraft. Having a radar cross-section of just 0.003 meters squared, it was the plane thought to have changed the future of aerial warfare. With a successful stealth fighter in the US's hands, a stealth bomber seemed like the next obvious candidate. But this meant creating a bomber that could deliver nuclear weapons undetected inside enemy territory. The bomber would need incredible range and fly at high altitudes to avoid being detected by Soviet radars. The program for such a bomber was given immense funding by the US Air Force who considered it a necessary development for nuclear deterrence against the Soviets. However, despite the enhanced funding, any proposed designs for a stealth bomber involved heavy engines and large bodies that would easily get detected by Soviet radars. At the time, it was conventional knowledge that to make a bomber with these requirements, it had to be large and bulky to carry fuel and other necessary parts. But the B-2 was different from these designs because it promised to revolutionize how we fly aircraft as a whole. The B-2 was conceptualized by a company called Northrop Grumman who was one of the losing bidders for the contract of the F-117. Their proposal for a stealth bomber was based on a radical concept they had been developing for decades called flying wings. In typical airplanes, parts like the fuselage and tail are considered necessary to carry vital components and keep the plane stable. But these components also contribute to the plane's weight and drag. And so Northrop's revolutionary idea sought to remove them completely, leaving only the wings that would fit all the necessary components inside themselves. Such a design is complicated to say the least. For starters, by removing the fuselage and tail, the stability of the airplane is largely compromised. Planes are subject to intense pressure from wind and air resistance at high altitudes. The tail of a plane carries horizontal stabilizers and a fin that keep the plane from tipping to this pressure. The tail is also responsible for adjusting the pitch and yaw of a plane. They contain control surfaces called elevators and rudders that move to steer the plane around by adjusting the balance of lift and induced drag. But by removing the tail altogether, it meant completely rethinking the control surfaces to steer the plane. The B-2 sought to solve this problem by moving all the control surfaces to the trailing edge of the wings. Split rudders will be placed on the outer edges to adjust roll whilst the center implemented additional control surfaces called elevons to perform both the role of typical ailerons and elevators to make the plane rise, fall, and turn. To adjust yaw or make the plane turn, instead of using a conventional tail rudder, they would lift up the control surfaces creating an air brake favoring one side whilst also imbalancing the thrust of the engines to push the plane towards one direction. This mechanism to adjust yaw, although working effectively, severely degrades the maneuverability of the aircraft. This is because the lack of a horizontal stabilizer highly increases the risk of tipping over during the movement at sharp angles. Although perhaps unfeasible for other stealth aircraft, maneuverability isn't an important characteristic of the B-2. The B-2 is a strategic bomber and the absence of maneuverability is largely outweighed by the flying wing's greater altitudes and speeds. But this mechanism to turn the plane still severely negates the much larger problem of the flying wing's design, which is the stability of the aircraft. This flying wing concept largely dates back to the 1940s when Northrop applied the same principles in the development of the YB-49 flying wings aircraft. The YB-49 was another long-range strategic bomber that would have been able to fly across the Atlantic to attack Nazi targets in World War II. But this same lack of stability resulted in test flights having unexpected and uncontrollable yaw movement, from the lack of fins to resist the applied pressure thus causing the aircraft to shake and tumble down. Without the support of a tail, its only logical way to maintain some form of stability is by using feedback loops that consistently adjust the control surfaces to lift and turn the plane into the desired position. In the 1940s, this was basically close to impossible which led to the cancellation of the YB-49 program. But in the age of computers, the B-2 is able to create a system that accomplishes this feat. Such a system today is called fly-by-wire and it's used in almost all modern-day aircraft. 
If you look at this chart, you can see the basics of just how it works. In the case of uncontrollable flight, a computer unit receives feedback from onboard sensors and adjusts the surfaces to remain stable in the air. Whilst doing that, it integrates the pilot's inputs to combine the commands into processable data that steer the plane. The result is a highly complicated combination of inputs moving the plane safely through the air. The system works well for basic movements planned for the B-2, but obviously again hinders our maneuverability that the B-2 is forced to sacrifice. Whilst the flying wing design sacrifices a lot of reform and is a concept that took decades to perfect. It works to create a shape that maximizes lift and minimizes drag. But this design wasn't chosen for its increased aerodynamical abilities. The massive lack of maneuverability can be greatly outdone by bombers like the B-52. Instead, the flying wing's design was chosen for the specific requirements planned for the missions of the bomber. If you look at this illustration from a 19 Air D DARPA study, you can see how the Air Force planned to implement the bomber in strategic attacks. The goal was to fly high altitudes above air defenses to go unnoticed when dropping bombs, before silently escaping the scene back to safe grounds. But if you look at this report closely, you can see that it also heavily emphasizes that the largest threat to such a mission would be getting detected by radar. The B-2 was developed during a time of transition in military doctrine. Soviet air defense systems were making traditional payload-filled bombers less and less reliable. This caused the focus to shift from massive nuclear arsenals to more flexible and precise capabilities. A large part of this new doctrine was to be able to deliver nuclear weapons deep into enemy territory. This DARPA study is a clear demonstration of the new military doctrine's effect on the engineering of the B-2. The flying wing's design, whilst being great for conventional flight, is more importantly an even more phenomenal design choice for the stealth capabilities of the aircraft. Stealth aircraft are aircraft that are designed to optimize for the lowest radar cross-section possible. Radars work by transmitting waves outwards and then switching to a receiver mode that waits for some of the waves to bounce off objects that indicate to the radar that something is in that direction. What radar cross-section does is it measures on the plane how many of the incoming waves are bounced back towards the radar in a unit of meter squared. There are many ways radar waves can bounce off of aircraft. The two most common that aircraft struggle with are specular and double bounce reflection. Specular reflection is just normal reflection, like a laser on a mirror where the angle of incidence equals the reflection of the waves. Combating specular reflection is a difficult but crucial task in developing stealth aircraft. The problem for the B-2 however is that it is a bomber, and bombers are massive planes. The B-2's large surfaces are death traps for specular reflection. To combat this, engineers curve the shape of the plane with smoothed out surfaces whilst also sweeping back the wings at faceted angles. The F-117 was a plane that had a completely different approach to the B-2. While the F-117 has flat and faceted surfaces to reflect radar waves in different directions. The B-2 uses a computerized version that allows it to engineer smoothed out surfaces that form a complex shell perfectly shaped to reflect radar waves in scattered directions. This advanced computer technology wasn't readily available in the development of the F-117, which makes the B-2 the first stealth aircraft to use this outer shell approach in its design. However, when radar waves do hit the surface of a plane, the bounce back reflection is only equal to the size and angle of the object it reflects off of. And if you look at the B-2 carefully, you will notice that it's filled to the brim with serrated edges that can be found quite clearly on the trailing edge, landing gear doors, engine intake, and even on the engine exhaust. These serrated edges can even be found on modern day stealth aircraft like the F-35 and next generation B-21. They serve as another way to reflect the radar waves in scattered directions. When radar waves hit the serrated edges, the rough shape reduces the size of a single reflecting surface that then scatters the way the waves and minimizes the reflection towards a single direction. Even the smallest parts of the aircraft feature these edges so that all angles of the B-2 are undetected to the radar. But where most stealth aircraft find themselves at a disadvantage is in the case of double bounce reflection. Double bounce reflection is when the radar wave bounces off of two or more surfaces. The problem for stealth aircraft is that parts of the airplane like the tail and engines are unavoidable double bounce death traps. To combat this, stealth aircraft like the F-35 have to implement twin tails and twin engine intakes that prevent complete bounce back reflection by adjusting the fin angle and narrowing the engine intake facing away from the incoming waves. The B-2 however takes a vastly different approach by straight up moving the engines to the top of the wings. By moving the engines to the top, it hinders performance due to the lower pressure air present above the wings. But with the lower performance, it also covers the engines from the ground which not only hides it from radar waves but covers it up from infrared sensors that can lock onto the thrust of the plane. In terms of double bounce reflection on the tail though, the B-2 doesn't have a tail, and this is precisely why the US Air Force liked the design of the B-2 so much. Although true that the flying wings design helped the aerodynamical abilities of the aircraft, the lack of a tail and the ability to move the engines to the top of the wings greatly reduces the radar cross-section of the aircraft, being the perfect design to counter against Soviet radars. But all this integrated stealth technology is practically useless if we can't carry any munitions on board. Older jets like the F-16 
feature weapons on the bottom of the wings to help the plane carry more munitions. But as you can imagine, this is just not feasible for a stealth bomber like the B-2. Instead, all the essential components of the B-2 are stored inside the aircraft's outer shell. But to carry more munitions on board, the plane features a unique bomb deployment system known as the Rotary Launcher Assembly. This system allows the B-2 to carry and release a variety of munitions in its internal bomb bay doors, without at all compromising its stealth capabilities. The key advantage of this Rotary Assembly is that it maintains the B-2 stealth characteristics whilst being able to carry a larger variety of bombs. Along with the internal bomb storage, if you look at the surface of the B-2, you can see that it's mostly covered by this black coating around almost every part of the plane. This black looking color is a confusing color for the aircraft to have since the airframe of the B-2 is mostly made of fiberglass and graphite. But this oddly placed black coating is actually another stealth characteristic of the B-2 and is perhaps one of the bombers most effective. The B-2 is covered by a classified special carbon plastic composite that is reported to be able to absorb radar waves and convert them into heat energy. This radar absorbing material was so effective that all stealth aircraft after it have used similar compositions around the shell of the aircraft. In fact, the only outer part of the plane that isn't covered by this coating is the portion of the plane behind the engine exhaust. Because the thrust of the plane could possibly damage the special coating, cold hard titanium is placed to resist against the heat and protect the plane's body. But even the titanium is purposely placed on the upper portion of the plane to avoid reflecting radar waves below. Other than the titanium and a few other essential components such as the cockpit window, majority of the outer shell is composed of this classified coating. Whilst the inside of the plane is constructed out of majority fiberglass and graphite that helps absorb the radar waves and maintain the light weight of the aircraft. This cleverly thought out material composition is a large part of how the 172 foot B-2 bomber has the radar cross section of no more than that of a small bird. The B-2's first mission was over the skies of Yugoslavia in 1999. It was reported that day that a MiG engaged with one of the escorting F-15s whilst having no idea that the B-2 was directly above them as it went undetected into enemy territory. The bomber has been in service now for over 27 years and is seeming to still hold up against modern radar systems of the 21st century. But despite the overwhelmingly advanced capabilities of the B-2, it's actually one of the most rarely used aircraft in missions for the US Air Force. The only public known uses of the B-2 have been in five occasions since its development. And that is because along with being the most advanced and stealthy bomber in the world, the B-2 is also, by over four folds, the most expensive plane and one of the most expensive things the US Air Force has ever made. A single bomber can cost up to 2 billion US dollars. Whilst to fly the plane, it can cost around $150,000 per hour of flight. And the special coating of the B-2 requires careful maintenance and service to keep it mission ready. Along with that, the B-2 program was an extensively expensive program, costing around $23 billion just for the research and development throughout the 80s. Adding to that, there were only 20 B-2s ever made, which upped the cost of production since they couldn't make use of mass production lines as can be done for widely exported aircraft like the F-35. The high cost and difficult maintenance is easily the greatest disadvantage of the B-2. Along with that, the material composition of the plane is still a closely guarded secret that makes it much riskier for the aircraft to be near enemy territory. The secretive and expensive maintenance of the B-2 is mainly why for many years there have been plans to retire it for the newer and upgraded Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider. The B-21 is a much more cost-effective bomber and is fitted with modern stealth technologies that is said to make it the world's first 6th generation aircraft. If you'd like to see a video about the brilliant engineering behind the B-21, consider leaving a comment to let me know. Despite facing challenges, the B-21 has left an enduring mark on aircraft design as a whole. Being one of the greatest technological feats in the history of aviation, its engineering genius has fundamentally changed the capabilities of aircraft design, and at least for the time being, it will continue to serve as the greatest stealth bomber ever made.